let the peace, love, and blessings of Jehovah God and His Christ be upon the entire world. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. Incarnation, decarnation, and reincarnation. Everlasting Gospels delivered to the entire world by the Holy Spirit of Truth, Leader Lumba Olumba Obu, the supernatural teacher. Bible text, St. John chapter 11, verses 25 to 26. And Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. St. Matthew chapter 10 verse 28 And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Acts chapter 7 verse 48 Howbeit the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as said the prophets. Quote, the world is populated by means of incarnation, decarnation, and reincarnation. As thousands of people die each day, so are thousands born each day. All human beings had existed in spirit form only, but they, before they were born into this mundane world. What is spirit? Spirits are human-like messengers of God, having neither flesh, blood, nor bone. Spirits and angels are the same. Angels inhabit the celestial planes, while human beings inhabit the terrestrial plane. Man without the spirit is mute and negative. Without the spirit, man would be absolutely useless and worthless. We could not talk, walk, work, eat, sleep, think, reason, or do any other thing without the spirit. It is the spirit that provides the body with all energy. The spirit is God, and without God, man cannot do anything. Whether we do good or bad, it is the spirit at work. We do bad things because we do not listen to the spirit in us. We rather listen to the flesh. When we do good things, it means that we are listening to the, to the dictates of the spirit. The spirit which is God is in all human beings. And all human beings are the image of God. Many people say that there is no God in a person who steals, fight, murder, etc. This is erroneous. The spirit which is God is in all human beings regardless of whether they are good or bad. Moses, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, David, Elijah, Samson, Solomon and so forth, they all committed murder, adultery, idolatry and other sins. Are you saying that God was not in these great men? God is in all human beings regardless of whether they are black, white, poor, wicked or good. It is the spirit that does everything in the world. The spirit is the still voice in us, while the flesh is the loud voice. Satan works with the flesh and is always at war with the spirit. If a person decides to kill, fornicate, steal, etc., the spirit, which is God, will advise him not to do it and also warn him of the consequences if he does it. Because of his greed, 
burning desire and lust. He refused to listen to the dictates of the Spirit, which is God, and then commit sins in order to satisfy the desires and lusts of the flesh, thus yielding to Satan incarnation. Man had existed in spirit form before he is born into this mundane world. The spirit becomes embodied in flesh and the process is referred to as incarnation. Apart from Adam and Eve, all human beings are born through the womb of a woman. We are told that God formed man with the clay from the earth and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. The significance of that breath is that God dwelt inside Adam. Adam was the house of God and so all human beings are the house of God. We are further told that God sent Adam into a deep sleep and created Eve with a rib from his side. The significance of this deep sleep is that Adam actually died. When he resurrected, that was when a rib from his side was used in creating Eve. It was the same spirit that Adam had which caused our Lord Jesus Christ to reincarnate as a quickening spirit. Eve was the first mother on earth. It would have been very easy for God to create human beings in the same manner as he created Eve. But if he did, what would be the use of a woman? God created the womb of a woman through which all human beings, spirits, angels, and God himself must pass through into this mundane world. Man is the heaven and woman is the earth. Therefore, all human beings must first pass through the man into the woman and is then conceived in the womb and be born into the world. It is the spirit that actually becomes flesh. The spirit covers itself with flesh. No one can see the spirit and the spirit does not appear by itself. It is embodied in the flesh. The spirit, which is God the Father, is in all human beings. That is why no one can see God the Spirit. No human being would go out naked and so the Spirit would not appear on its own in this mundane world. It must first cover itself with flesh and then be born into the world as a human being. The Father is the creator and owner of all human beings, spirits and angels. Every baby born or unborn is the replica of God. Since God created the womb of a woman for spirits, angels and himself to pass through into the world, you can now realize what grievous sins human beings commit when they practice abortion, sterilization and other forms of birth control. There is no place in the Bible where human beings are told to practice abortion and other forms of birth control. And God did not give man authority to prevent anyone from coming into the world. A baby conceived in the womb could be an angel or God himself. Remember how Pharaoh tried to kill the baby Moses and Herod tried to kill the baby Jesus. They destroyed many innocent children in the hope that they would kill Moses and our Lord Jesus Christ during their mass extermination of children. From these examples you should realize that no one should practice 
these sins of abortion and birth control. These sins are murders. And this is how human beings are challenging God, who is the giver of all life. As the giver of all life, he is also the taker of all life. Therefore, everyone sent to earth by God has the right to exist until God takes away his or her life. Decarnation. There is no death. The spirit becomes a human being by incarnation. After some time on earth, the spirit decarnates. That is to say, the spirit is extracted from the embodiment of the flesh. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Fear not him that destroy the body, but rather fear him that destroy both body and soul. There is a greater being that lives inside every human being. That is the spirit which is God. The spiritual element or soul in man is indestructible. Since the spirit which is God dwells in man, it means that man does not die because God cannot die. What really happens is that the spirit is extracted from the body and is, and is transferred to another place to perform another duty or assignment. The spirit comes out leaving the body or house behind. It is just like a person that takes off his clothes then walking away and leave them behind him. Many people believe that when a person dies, that is the end of that person. Others believe that after a person dies, he will not give account for all the sins he has committed when he was alive. This is erroneous because his spirit is still alive and have to account to God for the sins he committed while he was in the flesh. When our Lord Jesus Christ spoke about death, he is referring to his spirit. When the spirit is destroyed, that is the end of that person. That is why our Lord Jesus Christ said that we should not fear him who destroys the body, but rather fear him who can destroy both body and soul. He further said that he is the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in him, though he was dead, yet shall he live. Many persons believe that, many people believe that when a person dies and is buried, it is the body and the spirit that is buried in the ground. It is only the body that is buried, but the spirit goes up to God to be given other duties. Since angels, spirits, and human beings are all messengers of God and servants and workers in his vineyard, which is the world. Many people claim that they build a church or a temple or a synagogue for God. How can one erect a building for God? And it is God who owns everything including human beings. The scripture clearly states that God does not dwell in temples made with hands. Human beings are the temple of God. The way in which the spirit leaves the body is very sorrowful. The person may be shot with a gun or stabbed with a knife or a sword, a spear or a machete and so forth or drowned in water or killed in a motor accident, or hit by a tree or stone, or died from sickness, old age, etc. These are agents of evolution. The spirit is the life of the body. It is God who gives life and it is God who takes life. All human beings are messengers of God and man may be used for constructive or destructive purposes. 
it must be clearly understood that all human beings are the property of God and whatever he does with human beings he is entitled to do it and no one should question him or murmur and blaspheme against him this is why no one should weep or keep a mourning house when someone dies if you do it means that you are questioning God for the action he has taken with his creation the inhabitants of the world pays more respect to a person when he dies than when he was alive when he was alive the person may be neglected when ill or in distress or in poverty he may be denied food clothing etc when he was alive and in need but at death thousands of pounds may be spent to give the dead person what they call a decent death um, what they call a decent funeral or a good send off thus the person receives more attention and respect when he dies and in many cases may even be honored with awards of medals and titles what good are all these things to a corpse other people saved all their money for their funeral but refused to help the poor and needy the scripture says that man in his best state is vanity he heapeth up riches and knoweth not who shall gather them it further says that man is but a shadow when the father withdraws his spirit from man all that remains is just a corpse a lump of clay all is lost and selfish greed were in vain when the spirit is extracted from the body it is transferred by god to another place where it again incarnates and is born again as another human being this is known as reincarnation one spirit reincarnates as many persons reincarnation why is it that as thousands of people die each day thousands are born daily and why is it that the world is so densely populated today as compared to hundreds or thousands of years ago? The answer is because of reincarnation. This is the method used by God to populate the entire world. Human beings are messengers and workers in God's vineyard, the world. When a human being is born into the world, he is given specific assignments. At the end of his assignments, the spirit is extracted from the body by God. And he is transferred to another place to carry out another assignment. For example, a person may be born in Africa as a black man. After he dies, his spirit is transferred to England where he was born into an English family as a white man. There is no difference between male and female in the spirit world. All are one and the same. Neither is there any racial discrimination as in this mundane world. A person might die, a person might die as a man and be born as a woman at another place and vice versa. So also, a white person after death, his spirit may be reincarnate as a black person at another place. This means that one spirit reincarnates several times at different places. For instance, one spirit, many persons. For example, 
a human being that is born in the world today could be in the world for the third, tenth or eighteenth time. Only God knows who every human being is. Whether you are in the world fifty or a hundred times, the Father knows who you are. You could be Abraham, Nimrod, Jezebel, or one of the prophets of old, but he knows you. That is why a human being who is currently on earth for say the tenth time is accountable to God for all the sins which he has committed during the previous nine times that he was on earth. That is why our Lord Jesus Christ came into the world to sacrifice his blood to redeem mankind to God. If he had not come, people like Abraham, Moses, David, Solomon, and the other great patriarchs would not be saved. That is why only when you are baptized into the, brother, into the brotherhood of the cross and star, which is the new kingdom of God on earth, that all the sins which you have committed from the time of Adam to the time of your baptism, they are forgiven. Because you have to repent and confess all your sins and be immersed in water three times in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Unlike how people are baptized in the church denomination. If when people die, their spirits did not reincarnate, there would be only a small number of people in the world as compared to the present time. It is now a population explosion. At this end of time, all the people from Adam downwards are here on earth today to face the judgment day. This great day will come very shortly. All the patriarchs, prophets, the apostles, are here on earth today. All the people of old are here. Jehovah God and his Christ and his heavenly host are now here on earth. And all what you see and hear happening in the world today are in preparation for the judgment day. That is why the primary teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit of truth no personified is that we should love one another regardless of race, color, creed, or status in life. No one knows who the other human being is. A human being may be a prophet, angel, or God himself. That is why we are warned to love ye one another. The scripture says to honor all men. Love the brotherhood, fear God, and honor the king. The brotherhood is God, Christ, angels, human beings, and all things animate and inanimate. The animals and all the animate things are our brethren also. The commandment which says thou shalt not kill applies to all animal birds, fishes and other living things. Every animal on earth represents a human being. Every time an animal is killed, a human being dies at that particular moment in time. That is why Abel was killed by Cain soon after he, Abel, had killed the lamb. In this new kingdom of God, which is brother to cross and star, no one is allowed to kill even a fly or a mosquito or ant. All human beings must return to that first love that existed in the Garden of Eden, where human beings, animals, birds, fishes, creeping things and plants live together in love. When a human being return to spirit form, God can send him to carry out certain assignments in the animal, 
in the birds kingdom, the fish kingdom, or the plant kingdom, for example. A spirit may be called Michael in the spirit world. By incarnation, he is now known as Christopher on the planet Earth. Christopher, after spending a time on Earth, dies and his spirit reincarnates as an elephant in the animal kingdom and is called Betsy. After a time, Betsy dies and her spirit becomes a tree in the forest and is known as Yukon. After a number of years, Yukon the tree was cut down by man and the spirit returns again to the spirit world as Michael. Even prominent trees represent human beings. That is why when a prominent tree in a village falls down, a prominent person in that village dies. All what is happening in the world today is the fulfillment of the word of God. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, and those who kill with the sword will be killed by the sword. This statement of our Lord Jesus Christ applies to everything. If you do good, you can expect good to be done to you. If you do evil, you must also expect evil to be done to you. Those who take delight in waging war against other people and kill with guns, swords, machetes, bombs and so forth will be killed by these implements. If you discriminate, hate and kill people because of their race, color or creed, these things will also happen to you. It may not happen to you in this present life, but when you are reincarnated, you will experience these things. This applies to people who practice abortion and abandon their babies, those who steal, tell lies, or deny people of food, clothes, etc. The Bible says that whatever you sow, that shall you reap. A person who slaughter animal may become an animal when his spirit is reincarnated so that he also will be slaughtered like animals that he had killed. This is why we should not eat meat or fish because it is our brethren that we are eating. God did not instruct man to eat meat, fish and so forth for food.